Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Calgary Real Estate Wealth uh, Seminar. This week's seminar, How to Quit Your Day Job and Become a Full-Time Real Estate Investor. Um, we've been doing this because we've got a lot of people coming to us and saying, you know, I'm, I really love this real estate investing thing. I want to do it full-time. I want to make enough cash flow so that I can quit my job. Well, we've got a little bit of a rude awakening for some people that it might take a little longer than they think. Okay, so starting off uh, with tonight's program, um, how to quit your day job and become a full-time investor. Let's get into it, Tim. Okay, so as I said at the beginning, um, we've had a lot of people ask, how do I become a full-time investor? How do I quit my job? Um, we can speak to our own personal experience that it takes a lot of time and you really, really have to have a passion for investing in real estate. And one thing we do want to tell you, we'll say it again within the presentation, but you know, if you're doing something that you love right now, like if you love being an engineer, if you love being a fireman or a nurse or whatever you're doing right now, we don't recommend quitting that to become a full-time investor. So we'll go through some of the things you have to do to become a full-time investor right away, but you know, don't quit your day job if you don't want to. This is you know, for the, the hardcore serious people and for the rest of you who, you know, you have to realize what it takes to, to quit and what you need to do to replace your income with real estate investment proceeds. Okay, yeah, and, before... And, yeah. Oh. yeah, Tim, I'll just jump in there. I know for me and Tim, uh, we were in different backgrounds before. Tim was in uh, retail, I was a chef, and, and we knew real estate could give us the lifestyle we wanted. So we changed careers. Um, we got into real estate for the flexibility uh, becoming a realtor, um, but becoming a full-time investor, we, and, and, and this is how you should really, really look at it, is if you're not happy in your job, as Tim is saying, you should, you could use real estate to get you there and work at a job that you really want to do. Um, and I know for us, Tim, we want to spend more time with our families, our kids play hockey, uh, we're all over the place, and, and being an investor slash realtor, it's really given us uh, the flexibility to, to live the life we deserve, really. Um, yeah, and, 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 and it does sorry. take a lot of work. Um, in the early years there, uh, when we were you know, making the transition and starting to become full-time investors, uh, we were working like 12, 18 hours a day, you know, showing people properties, buying our own properties, taking care of tenants, putting people in properties and all kinds of things. We went through a couple of recessions there. We went through the, the financial meltdown in 2008, the oil crash in 2015. So there's ups and downs that you need to have enough cash flow or enough equity in your assets to let you ride through these ups and downs. So it's not a, well, it's not a get rich quick scheme. It's also not a, uh, a smooth ride. So we just want to stress yeah. that before we get it before we get into it. And, and tonight we're gonna to show everybody exactly how our investors have done it. Um, so you could see if it's for you as well. But as you said, Tim, it takes work and it takes patience, uh, but you could definitely get there uh, with, with investing in real estate. Yeah, so this is the number one thing you gotta do if you're considering becoming a full-time real estate investor is you gotta take stock of where you are. And what we mean by that is, how much capital do you have or have access to? And how much can you qualify for? Because those are the two things that you're gonna to have to start off with. And by what we mean by how much capital is, how much money do you have? Because it, no matter what people say is you could buy all this real estate with none of your own money, you do need some of your own money to go out there and buy real estate. Um, if you, you can do it using other people's money completely, but there are costs along the way that you need cash for uh, while you're using other people's money. So, yeah. Um, oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, yeah, no. So it's very, very important. And if you're sitting there and you're wondering, okay, well, I don't have cash or I don't have capital. I know uh, for Tim and myself, we didn't have a lot of that in the beginning as well. And we had to go out and find ways to do it. And we're going to, so if you're sitting there and you're wondering, well, I don't have either of those things, um, we're going to go through the process on getting there. But the first thing is, is to find out where you're at and, and what you have and what can you do with it. And I guess we will bring Danielle back on just to touch base with what it looks like when people come to us and, and want to get into investing. And some people will be honest, come to us 
and they don't even have a job. And, and we don't look down at that at all. But sometimes we tell people, look, you may have to go back to work for three months just so you can qualify for a mortgage if you're not willing to take these other avenues to raise capital. So I'll let Danielle talk about her process uh, when we do have new people come on, on board. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Azad. So speaking of that, yes, exactly. Um, chatted with clients just the other week where there wasn't any employment income from the one spouse, but they were willing to maybe go back to work. So things like that will pop up in the deep dive in the conversation with your mortgage broker. What if we do this? What if you go back to work? What can you spend? Um, what if we refinance, which we'll chat about in a minute, what equity can we pull out and use for down payment? Um, you know, what if we redo a current mortgage that you have right now to help you qualify for another one? And then other things we'll talk about too is, okay, let's say we want to buy three properties. Well, maybe we buy one this year, but maybe your income is going up or you get a raise or your two-year average is going to be higher using the end of this year's income. Well, we can project out your income for next year and even the next year after that to see, okay, what can we buy this year, next year, the year after, and kind of set up a plan that way, assuming some things, some variables like our debt's going to be paid down as income going to be higher. So lots of that can happen. But part of it is obviously taking stock of where you're at right now. So what is exactly your situation right now? Therefore, what do we need to do to get you ready? And something else is I'd mentioned about, you know, not having um, an income. You know, there are other ways. There's JVs, which you can always pop on and ask him and his ad anytime about as well. But there are ways to invest without necessarily qualifying for a mortgage if maybe credit's not there or things like that. So taking stock of where you're at really is going to give you an accurate idea of what do you need for cash? What do you need for income to, to accomplish your goals? And what is your timeline? Are you wanting to buy five properties this year, but the numbers are saying you can only buy two and then maybe one the next year and then another one the next year? Like, what does that timeline look like? So it's really important to have those realistic goals. Also, taking stock of where you're at is where do you live right now? Do you own a home already? Can we show you in a move up program or do we need to purchase a second home or do we need to purchase it as a rental? How can we structure your financing to basically ideally use the least amount of cash possible to purchase the most amount of assets? So all of that comes up and it's about being creative, thinking outside of the box, um, you know, making sure we're looking at a bunch of different ways to qualify and then presenting you with all of the options and going through them to say, if we did this, then this, if we do this, then this. That way we can have a really great conversation to see, okay, where are you at? Where do you want to be? What do we do we have to get there? And are you okay with that? And the second thing is, um, you know, speaking of taking stock of where you're at, part of this is checking in on your mortgage that you have right now. So any of you that own a home currently, this year we've seen property values increase by quite a bit. And I can tell you that in the last six months, I've done more refinances probably than most years in past. Because when values are high and we can refinance, we can go to 80% of your property value. So the higher the values are, the higher the market is, the higher the comparables are, the higher your appraised value is going to come in at. Therefore, the more money you can borrow and take out in equity in your home. So for example, when we refinance to 80%, if your home is worth 500,000, 80% of that is 400,000. That means you can have a new mortgage of 400,000. Of this, let's say you owe 300,000 on your current mortgage. That means you have $100,000 that is your money that you can access to use for whatever you want. That money is just sitting there. Had we not you know, looked at your current portfolio and seen what's possible, you might have bypassed that $100,000 that's sitting there that you could use to invest in properties. So not only that, but when we refinance, we can also look at extending out your amortization. So by extending out your amortization, we can lower your payments. Well, by lowering your payments, it actually helps us qualify in your mortgage application for additional properties sometimes, or at least additional purchase prices. It might be the difference between buying a townhome or duplex and a single family home, because by refinancing, we can lower your payment, therefore increase your cash flow on a property you might already own. So all of this is really important to review, look at, look at all of the options, evaluate and consider as part of your goals and your plan, your investment plan for accumulating properties. What is the best way to set you up 
in what stage, in what process, at what part of your life, in what year, with what type of property, the list goes on. So it's really important that you do that deep, buy, deep dive, take stock of where you're at, see where you want to go. And then we can work backward to figure out, okay, how do we get you there? Yeah, that's awesome, Danielle. And for everybody out there, Danielle made some key points points there. Some people come to us and they can qualify up to $800,000, but their dream is, is to own $2 million worth of real estate. And if we go buy that $800,000 property, it may, it will definitely impact them buying future rental property. So sometimes we want to start them off way smaller, have a plan in place and get them there. And by, by listening to the right team, um, you could get there way faster. You could make a mistake by buying that big dream home. Uh, but if you delay the gratification, you could have way much more. And, and another couple of points there on, on, um, on what we do for our clients is if we have a suited property and we turn it into a legal property, now Danielle can calculate both sets of rents, which will then help you qualify for more mortgages down the road. So there are different strategies. You need to know what you're doing um, so you can get there foster. Yeah. And, and on the capital side, what you want to do is you want to sort of make a checklist of what you have, what kind of assets you have, what kind of cash you have access to stocks, bonds, RSPs, lines of credit. You want to know exactly how much um, capital you have access to. And then, you know, if you have to add to that to get to where you want to be and to replace your income. Um, there was a question in the chat about JVs. We're going to talk about JVs quite a lot later on in the presentation, so we'll get that answered for you. Um, number yeah. two is become the expert. And what we mean by that is go out there and find as much information you can on real estate investing as you can. Uh, you know, go to the, the bookstore or Amazon or whatever, find as many real estate investment books as you can and try to make them region specific. If you're in Alberta here, try and get books that are Alberta or Canadian focused. If you're in the States, you can get books that are focused on American real estate. Rules and regulations around mortgages and purchases and all kinds of things are different from region to region. So try and get things that are local to where you're investing. Um, you can listen to blogs and podcasts. You can watch YouTube, our own crew TV channel, which we'll go over a bit later, has tons and tons and tons of free information for investors out there. Um, join clubs and groups. People who are part of our network here, our meetup group, we have over 5,000 members. Some of them have been around with us for, you know, 12, 15 years. It's great information, you know, week after week after week. And we're always just a phone call away as well. Um, yeah, also, and, and Tim, just, just adding to that, sorry. Um, and you have to remember, Tim and I were taught this a long time ago. You, you're an average of the five five people around you or the five closest people around you. And we always kind of say this, if, you, if you've read our books that Tim and I have wrote, um, we, we go over it. Um, there's Fearless Real Estate. That, that, that's a book that it goes through in detail. Um, if you're in a network or you're around real estate investors that are actually doing it and not only doing it, but pointing you in the right direction, this is key. Okay. Cause there's a lot of groups out there that just want to make money, sell their courses. We actually want you to succeed. Um, and as I said, we're giving guarantees to our buyers when we're buying properties, we're telling you, this is the property you have to buy. Uh, because it's going to give you these returns. When you're around people like that, you're going to succeed. So uh, this is awesome, becoming the expert, especially if you want to do this full time. Yeah, and, and I want to I want to go over that one point that I had had there is you want to limit the amount of money you spend on these real estate investment courses. There are courses out there that you can pay five thousand for, you can pay twenty thousand for, you can pay thirty thousand for. We've had people that you know have spent obscene amounts of money on these real estate investment courses. Um, you don't have to spend all that kind of money. There are people out there, there are less expensive courses out there if you have to take a course. Um, really what, you know, what we would suggest if you're gonna spend that kind of money is get yourself a mentor, shadow somebody around who's doing what you wanna do. If there's someone that owns a whole bunch of houses or who's doing Airbnbs like crazy and you wanna do that specific strategy, shadow that person around, ask them to be your mentor. Do things that don't cost you a ton of money because that $20,000 uh, fee that you pay for one of those courses 
could be part of a down payment on your next property. So you want to keep it like what we tell everybody um, when they're buying a house is you want to keep as much of your own cash in your pocket and use the bank's money. It's the same thing when you're dealing with real estate investment education. You want to hang on to as much of your own cash as possible and learn as much as you can, you know, by not spending that money because that could be a resource for you down the road. Okay, so yeah. we'll, move, we'll move on to number three, um, develop a real estate investment plan. Um, if you're going to quit your day job, you're going to start a new business. And that business is real estate investing. And you have to actually treat it like a business and develop a real business plan. Now, as I, you can yeah, talk, exactly. about, talk about your plan. I know you don't have it physically with you, but what you did when you started out. Yeah, so this might sound a little cheesy to everybody out there, but if you're working with us, all of our investors, we need to know their goals. We, we actually have goal planning templates that, that our investors can fill out. And then we actually work towards a plan to get you there. And when I started off, I actually had a nice binder. I think I bought it at Staples and I printed off exactly where we wanted to be, how many properties we wanted to own, how we were going to do it. If it was joint ventures, if I was raising capital, what kind of returns I was paying, we're going to get into all that stuff shortly. But I actually went out there, um, uh, started up a, a holding company and then branded everything uh, with that holding company. We don't advise to go do that straight off the bat. It's not necessarily uh, that you have to do that. I know Tim and I, uh, Tim, we went off straight away and did it back in the day. Uh, and the reason why we say that, other investment groups will tell you to go start a corporation, but it actually costs you money to do the accounting on that corporation every year. It may set you back $2,500, $2,600 per year uh, to run the books for that company. And if you're not producing that in cash flow, it's just not worth it. And you can actually roll your properties uh, into the corporation later on. So, um, but getting back to branding, I know Tim, we've seen out there, people have, uh, have their own business cards and stuff like that. We think a lot of that stuff, to be honest with everybody out there, it's a load of nonsense. I mean, all you really need to do is uh, brand yourself, put it in a portfolio, show people what you're doing. And when I put a business plan together back in the day, I mean, we detail it in our book there, Fearless Real Estate. Um, what I did is I kind of put stats in there, community stats. Tim is very, very good at this, at giving it to clients. Um, what communities are doing, what kind of returns. We would find actual properties if we were renovating, if we're doing different strategies and show people the returns, uh, the ARV of properties, the after renovation value of properties. So our investors could see what returns they were going to get. The biggest thing with an investment plan is protecting yourself and protecting your partner and understanding what the property is going to do in terms of um, dollars coming in and dollars going out. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and what that plan does is it sort of sets you on a course to where you want to be. If you want to be, you know, quit your day job and become a full-time real estate investor in five years, well, you're going to have to know how you're going to get there. And this plan will lay out, you know, whether you're going to buy a certain amount of properties, whether you're going to partner with a certain amount of people, whether you're just going to go out and raise capital um, to do it on your own, or whether, you know, like I said, to use JV partners, you need to plot a course of getting there. You know, we've had so many people come in and just say, oh, I want to be a full-time real estate investor, but they don't know how to get there and they don't know what they're going to do to get there. You have to plot it out because you are starting a business. Another thing that you want to do is you want to share that plan with somebody, share it with your significant other, you know, your husband, your wife, your, you know, someone you work with or your best friend, you want to be able to be for someone to hold you accountable. So if you really are going down this journey to become a real estate investor full time, um, it's nice to have someone in your corner that will, you know, sort of keep you on track. So someone to keep you accountable. Um, I know as that and I, because we worked with the same investment group, uh, for years and years and years. We actually sat in the same office desk side by side with each other. And, you know, there were a couple other guys in that room. We all kept each other accountable. You know, we were always, you know, saying, well, here's a great property to buy. This is a great property. This is a bad one. So we always had each other to keep ourselves accountable and to keep moving forward and acquiring more properties. And also the final thing is have a realistic timeline. Um, 
you have to know that real estate is never, never, never a get rich quick scheme. So you, you have to have a realistic timeline. You're not going to replace your income in six months or 12 months. You might, you know, we never say never, but most likely it's going to take many years to replace your income. Yeah. And Tim, just, just adding in there on the realistic side of things, a lot of people get carried away with cash flow um, and the cash flow achievable. It is unrealistic that the cash flow from the properties in the first year are going to replace your income. That's not where it's coming from. We're going to get through to where you actually make the real money in real estate shortly, but you have to be realistic. And when you're working with people like Tim, myself, we're going to tell you straight off the bat, this is what's going to happen. But the biggest thing we can give you in here is to take action. We've seen people, Tim was talking about those expensive courses. We had a lady coming to our office just two weeks ago. She spent, she's doing, Tim, she was doing three courses at once, I think, um, right now. And she must be in, I don't know, she must be in for twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars 40000 on courses. And she came to us trying to get us to point her in the right direction. I mean, if you're spending that mon much money on courses, um, you shouldn't be at that stage. It should be dealt with straight off the bat. You should have your investment plan ready to go and you should know how you're going to tackle it um, and how you're going to take action and, and make it successful. So we want to stress, stress that out for sure. Yeah, and the, I don't know if you can see it, but in the background picture here, as that's celebrating with a young lady here she um she had some difficulty in her lives with uh you know things that happened to her relationship and she really wanted to invest in real estate and she didn't have a whole lot of money her income wasn't very good so we actually pointed her in the direction of this house behind us um and it's a very very inexpensive house it was kind of run down but it was in her price range and she didn't care. She just wanted to take action and buy it, her first one, and she did. So she did whatever it took to buy that property. And yeah, she, she's in a not so good neighborhood, but she took action and she started her journey. Um, yeah, and I love that picture, Tim, just because that house was run down. You could, I don't know, you can't really make out the roof, but that I've never seen a worse off roof than that roof, Tim. It was bad. Um, but that house has been fully gutted. I mean, she moved into it. And this is why we kind of say, if you haven't done renovations before or flipping, at least move into a property and take a room at a time, take a project on a time. Don't go in there. And, and we say this to flippers that come to us all the time, like they want to go and make a quick buck. Our flippers on a minimum, Tim, are making $100,000 per flip. Um, we, we can't guarantee that, but that's, that's minimum that they're making uh, after all said and done. But if you haven't done it, you can't walk into our office and say, I want to flip a house. We're going to say, what experience uh, have, do you have? Uh, what do you bring to the table? We want to stress this. And if you haven't done anything, the best thing is to do what Tara did here, um, is move into a, into a property, take a room at a time, take a year to do it. She, she was renting before this, Tim. So now yeah. she moved into a property. And now this property is worth um, even though it's a very, very uh, small property, she's probably made over a hundred thousand dollars on this property already. Uh, but she loves where she lives and, and she's not moving out, but it's put her in a position where, um, she took action. She understood the plan and now she has a beautiful home. Yeah. And, and her strategy initially was to buy it, fix it up and sell and do the next one. Um, like as I said, she loved it so much. She's staying there. But what you have to do before you get started is, is pick a strategy and just stick with it. Um, if you're good at renting out properties, if you're a good property manager, then the buy and hold strategy is probably for you. That's the route you want to go down. If you love house hacking, we've got a ton of young people that are house hacking, that means <laughs> buying property, moving into it, renting out either rooms in the place or renting out the top floor or living in the bottom or living in the top, renting out the basement. And... You know, once that, they can do that because they only have to put 5% down when they purchase the thing, but then they live in it for a while and then they go on and they do it again. They house hack the second one and this first one becomes a full-time rental property. So whatever you're good at, whatever you want to do, um, find that strategy and just do it. We find some people, like we talked about that lady who's taken all these investment courses, 
she was trying to go down the route of doing every strategy at the same time. You know, she was thinking about doing Airbnb arbitrage. She was going to house hack as well. And she wanted to do some buy and holds. And then she was talking about getting apartment buildings and she hadn't even done one thing yet. So what we suggest is start with one that you're good at, take it from there. And then, you know, once you're successful at that one strategy, then move on to the next strategies. And, and, and the bottom and line in this slide is don't overanalyze. For those of you that are around for our real estate tip of the week, um, we've seen a lot of investors get analysis paralysis. Uh, it's funny because when we go into a house and we're with someone who's, you know, analyzing every little thing, talking about, you know, well, I got to replace the paint in this room and, and, you know, I'll need to replace the appliances and all that, even though they're in pretty good shape, you know, as and I will just say, well, no, just buy it and rent it out. Don't do anything to it. You know, don't overanalyze it because tenants don't have the same pickiness that you do. And it, it's interesting to, to confront people and tell them to stop analyzing too much. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Um, and if you did miss that investment tip of the week, just um, subscribe to our YouTube channel and it will be on there. Um, but Tim, you're right. First thing is, is to take action and don't think that you got to start big. I mean, and, and getting back to the lady who's doing the multiple courses, Tim, you could do one course, one of those courses in the States. So I, we can't mention names, but courses are very good at throwing all these different strategies at you. And then you get totally confused and you don't know what to do. And then guess what? You don't take action. So um, our goal is just to help our clients find a way, find what they're good at, find out what they want to do. And investors, you have to remember, always run out of one or two things. It doesn't matter what stage you are at. If you're starting off or you've been investing for 10 years, investors always run out of either capital funds to invest with or the ability to get financing. So you can't let that stress you out. If investing full time, if, if that's what you really want to do, it takes being very, very good at those two things. And, and I guess we're going to get into it a little bit here, Tim. Yeah. So like, as I've said, you know, you run over either capital or financing. So going back to the beginning of this, talking to Danielle, find out how many mortgages you can qualify for, or if you can even qualify for one at all. If you can't qualify for a mortgage, then what you have to do is go out and find someone who can, because you're not going to become a full-time investor by buying houses with cash. Um, we've got some flippers who, because they do so many and they, they're so good at it, it's their full-time business. They do have that ability to write a check for a house that's all run down and then they fix it up. But odds are most people don't have that type of capital available. So, or, you know, and if they can't qualify for a mortgage, they have to find out where to go get it. So they have to find out how to ask for either the capital or the financing. And by creating a business plan, um, you know, you will plot out what you're going to do over the next five years. You can ask investors for capital or financing a lot easier if it's presented in a professional way. Um, we say this yeah, all the so time when, oh, sorry, go on. Yeah. So. Uh, sorry, guys, it's a bit of a lag because I'm down in Sydney, but um, you know what? You The first thing you should be doing is, is letting people know you belong to an investment group because it's very, very hard if you're going to go and sell yourself, especially if you haven't done it before. And what we do with our investors is we get them to document um, uh, exactly what they've done. And once you've documented it, once you've taken action, it's very, very to easy to attract more people into your circle. Um, I seen Julian's on the call tonight. He's our electrician uh, for all of our investors. And Julian came to us here in a little townhouse in, in uh, Silver Springs. And the funny thing about that is when he came to us, it wasn't cash flowing. And we're like, no, nah, no, nah, don't worry about that. It will come good. The, the term of the mortgage he was on a terrible term before he met us and Danielle. Uh, and right now the term is up, the property, uh, uh, the, the tenants, actually his tenants moved out of that property. We actually bought them, the tenants, the property in Coventry, and then he re-rented for more amount. He did renovations to the property. He even, I think, put the vinyl plank into, the, in, into his townhouse there, made it more contemporary, and has no problem renting that property out. And then he went on to buy a foreclosure, and he bought a foreclosure in Silver Springs up the hill, um and basically 
hit a home run. I mean, when you say home run, he bought it at such a low price. It's probably worth, if not $150,000 to $200,000 more. He went on to putting a basement suite in, so he has extra income if he needs that. Um, and now he's in a position that he could even go again. But what he can do is turn around, document the townhouse, what that's doing, document the foreclosure he bought, what he did to it. And then now it's easy for him to go out and either attract more capital if he wants to. And to be honest, he may not even be um, willing to do that. Like you have to put yourself out there. You have to... Um, you have to be willing, Tim, we say this, to take some knocks. People get rejected a little, a little bit um, because not everybody's going to go for it. And we have to tell everybody out there on the call that investing in real estate isn't for everybody. Like even my own brother, I'm going up to his place on Saturday. He, um, he, I wouldn't even approach him to invest in real estate because, because it's not his thing. So you have to understand that not everybody's going to say yes and not everybody's going to want to get involved. But the key is the more prepared you are, um, the more, the more, what do you say, Tim, the more you could show that you've done it before, you know what you're doing, you're hanging out with the right team, you've got the right team assembled. Uh, we even encourage people to bring their, their people that they're raising capital off, bring them into the office or, or invite them to one of our seminars so they could see how straight up we are about what we do. Yeah, and, and asking somebody for a lot of money is not an easy thing to do. And you have to be prepared for a lot of rejection. But once you do it once, like if you you showcase your current rental property or your current Airbnb property or your current uh, wholesaling property, whatever it is, you can document it and showcase it. You've got a track record. Then you show that to your potential investors. And it doesn't take... We always say this, it doesn't take 10, 20, you know, partners to raise capital from. Usually if you can do it with one person and you can show them a return or they have an ownership position in the project that you do with them, they'll most likely want to do it again if it's successful. And I, when I went out to raise uh, or went out to get joint venture partners, I never had a, this huge network of people that were throwing cash at me. It was probably you know less than 10 people that I could go to and say look I've got a project here do you want to partner with me on this rental property can you qualify for the mortgage they had done it with me before or they had seen what I had done with other people so getting the capital off of them or the mortgage off of them wasn't that hard because I presented it in a business plan and like I said you don't need to go um, you don't need 10 of these people Normally, if you're successful with one or two or three people, they'll want to do it repeatedly, and that'll get you there just as fast. Yeah, Tim, that, that's a key point. And, and our business plan that we help our clients uh, put together, it, it shows how the investor is protected, and that's what everybody needs to know. Um, we also put the, a caveat on title, so first money in is first money out. If someone lends you $50,000 or $10,000 or whatever it is, that money is secured by the real estate. And by working with the right investment focused realtors, you should be buying properties that uh, you're purchasing under the value of what the property is worth. So that way there is instant security straight off the bat. Um, and, and you could showcase uh, that by, you know, by previous deals that the investment realtors uh, have done. And, and, and Tim, like that property you just bought in Ogden last week for Ryan, straight off the bat, he bought it for 370 to legalize it. I think with additional renovations he's doing, I think the total was around 15K worth of work, Tim. Yeah, but and the legalization was only five grand. Five grand. So he, he does Yeah, and we should showcase what he's doing to that property. I mean, he's spraying kitchen cabinets. Tim, he's changing flooring. He's doing some roof work. Um, we got it at a good price because it needs a little bit of work, but call it 15 grand worth of work in total that he wants to do. As Tim's saying, he only really has to do 5,000. Um, that property is worth 430,000 because it's got a brand new triple car, uh, double car garage, and it's walking distance to uh, the soon to be built Sea Train State Station in Ogden. So, so you need you need to show people these numbers so they are happy to get involved with you. 
Yeah, so that leads to the joint venture portion. Um, what you need to do, this probably goes back to the, to the education part before you become a real estate investor. Um, you need to understand how a joint venture works, what is involved in structuring it, um, the responsibilities of every party in it, and how to set it up, how to register it on title, and how to make it all legal and protect all parties. So what is a joint venture in real estate investing? Basically, it's one party brings the capital, one party brings the financing. So someone has a down payment and the other person has the ability to qualify for a mortgage. Um, and if you've been investing in real estate for a while, you understand, you come to the realization that the banks don't want to extend any more financing to you because you have too many mortgages under your name. And that's how Azad and I kind of got hit a brick wall is the banks had given us too many mortgages, so we could not get any more. So we had to go out and find partners who could qualify for a mortgage. Yeah, so and with the joint venture, we have seen it where both people are getting the financing. We have seen it where both people are putting um, up some cash 50-50. Um, and we have to, you have to remember, if you're starting off with the joint ventures, we always say this. Some people don't want to do joint ventures because they see that they're giving up half of the proceeds. But we always say you're sharing the risk, right? And what I like to do, what I, the way we've always seen it, right, Tim, is that you're actually helping someone out. Like there is no better joint venture when you're like, hey, I could make you $100,000. It may take three to five years, but I'm going to manage the property and you're going to have to do nothing but help me get the financing or help me raise the, the capital for the deposit. So we always look at it as helping people out. And we have to stress that 50% of something is better than 100% of nothing, okay? And if you're sitting on the sidelines and you, you're nervous about taking action, and we offer this to all of our clients, all of them. If they want to do a joint venture, we're in because we know we're selecting the property. We know the numbers and we know that we can take the fear out of the investor and move them forward. But we have to stress, okay? Like as, as Tim said earlier on in the, in, the, in the program tonight, that the last deal, Ryan got cold feet. We stepped in, we said, no problem. We'll give you the deposit. Um, we'll, we'll be joint ventures with you. And he's like, well, why would you do, why would you do that? And we're like, well, we believe in this property. Every property we buy for our clients, we would buy ourselves to have in our portfolio. And when Ryan, when Ryan um, understood that, he's like, nah, you know what, guys, I'm going to do it on my own. So he went from not wanting to move ahead to getting uh, an offer by Tim and myself to joint venture with him, then to doing it all on his own. And we have to have to stress that that is the best case scenario. If you can do it on your own, you should exhaust all avenues to do it on your own first, 100% because you keep 100% of the profits. But if you can't move forward, you should look at joint ventures for sure. Or if there is any fear, you should do, do a joint venture to limit that fear and help you take action. There's nothing worse than us seeing investors, especially the ones that spend money on courses. Uh, and that's why when people work with us, we have to interview them to see what they can do to move before we work with them um, because we only work with successful real uh, successful investors that are going to take action. So I want to stress that out there as well, Tim. Yeah, and if you want to become a real estate investor full-time, um, you're going to have to raise capital continuously. So you're going to go out to find a joint venture partner while you're probably doing one deal with them, you're going to have to find another joint venture partner to do the next deal. Because when it comes to um, replacing your income, quitting your day job, what you need is deal flow. And what's deal flow? You got to keep the real estate deals going one after another, after another, after another, because the cash flow is not going to be huge when you initially start out with these purchases. When you start out and you put 20% down on a property, uh, in today's market and we find a good property for you, it, it starts to cash flow. You're probably max, 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 you're going to cash flow four or $500 a month. Well, that's not going to replace your income. I can tell you that right now. So what you're going to need to do is go out and do multiple deals. Now, whether, you know, whether you're doing wholesaling on some deals to make some income, whether you're doing rent to own agreements for sale, whether you're flipping, whether you're 
just buy and hold. You have to do multiple deals to generate enough of that income to replace your income that you're making right now. And yeah. what that means is you have to be continually out there. And this takes work talking to different people, whether they're investors or not, to become joint venture partners. And if, if that's what you're doing, it's, you know, you may be replacing your income, but you may be spending more hours doing that than you are at your current job. Yeah. And Tim, just quickly on uh, point number three here, what are the responsibilities of parties involved? If, and, and this is why we educate our, our members. Uh, and this is what we've been doing. I think, Tim, this is our 175th uh, webinar or seminar to date. And the reason why we do it is we need to educate you so you you are you're the one that people want to go to and and the best way to get a joint venture uh done is to take on more responsibility because you're trying to do something that that you can't so by taking on things like property management um is a simple way because there's a lot of people that just don't want to deal with tenants and dealing with tenants the right tenants is the easiest way um to attract joint venture partners if you're taking that role on because then there's zero time that they have to put into this venture. Uh, we like to, when we're running numbers, we like to get a joint bank account. We like to run a Google uh, doc spreadsheet. We share that with our joint ventures so they could see every dollar going in and every dollar going out. And then we draw up a joint venture agreement and we register that on title as well. So both parties are protected. The property, what that means is that the property, there's nothing that can happen to it until both parties sign off on it. And Tim, over the years, out of all the joint ventures we've put together, there are a couple of hiccups along the way. And the worst thing that could happen in a joint venture is that one party wants to sell or needs to sell. And in that case, what happens there is you can have the option to buy that party out. If you have to put the financing in place, you'd have to find that financing or you sell the property and you split the proceeds. So your worst case scenario, it really isn't that bad. But with the joint venture, you need to have these discussions up front. And then those dis discussions go into a joint venture agreement and each party knows exactly what their role is and that's the most important part of a joint venture once it's drawn up um, it's signed off at the lawyers and then both parties are protected yeah and, and another thing that we have to stress that when you're dealing with a bunch of different joint venture partners is you sort of have to have some flexibility um, like as i said something could happen in someone's life where they have to sell well you know if you don't want to sell you can go out and find another joint venture partner to replace them. So you got to be able to think on your feet quickly and have some flexibility and, you know, be able to appease your partners so that everybody wins in the situation. You know, you don't want to be doing some financial traction, financial transactions behind their back. So that's why you have the open and accessible bank account. That's why you have all the expenses and revenues on a Google Sheets or a, a Excel spreadsheet that's shared between the parties. So as long as everything's transparent and people are willing to accept compromises, because if you're dealing with tenants, you know, situations will come up where you just didn't think that could ever happen. So you'll have to you know, be flexible to deal with these different situations that come up. And, you know, what we've found over the years is that these joint venture partners that we've been involved with, you know, some of them become very good friends and, you know, you may continue holding this property for years and years and years, or you may just sell it and just continue to be friends. So it, it you know, it's, it's sort of relationship building. It's not just business. And the better you are at that, the better you will be at raising money. Yeah. And, and you know what, things can get a little sticky. I would say like, I've got a joint venture partner, where she wants ten thousand dollars in the in the bank account. I mean, the cash so the cash flows come in. It's raised to ten thousand dollars. I think when it got to seven thousand, Tim, I said, yeah, I think that's enough in there. I think we we think three months worth of um, running costs that would be your mortgage, insurance, your taxes, which would roughly be on any property around seven thousand dollars. That should be that should be more than sufficient, but my joint venture partner wants ten k in there, and 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 that's fine. And then. Any proceeds after ten thousand dollars, 
every year we'll just split those profits uh, going forward. But she's someone that likes to maintain the property, right? So I have these discussions with Tim that, you know, you know, some things don't have to be done, but if that's really going to make her happy, as Tim is saying, you have to be flexible. And guess what she's doing? She's adding value to the property. I think that property was bought for four fifty. dollars uh, Now it's a legal uh, suite of property in Minipore. And it's it's beautiful. It's actually, it's it's too beautiful. Some properties are too, it's got granite countertops. It's got Samsung uh, stainless steel appliances. It's got beautiful flooring throughout. The suite downstairs is, they put, they, they actually put in a external staircase going down to the suite. They dug, so what they do there, they dig out the side of the house and then put a concrete foundation. Um, I mean, it's got some really expensive items in there, but that property will hold its value and sell for more down the road. So you got to give and take in these relationships. Um, we go through, if anyone's doing a joint venture, Tim and I have to meet both sides of the, the, the joint venture. We've actually met Tim. There's people doing joint ventures with their parents. There's people doing it with their brothers or sisters. There's nurses doing it. Um, we like to meet both parties and then clarify exactly what's going on in the joint venture. So then it's successful. Yeah. So moving on. Um, so if you've exhausted what you can do by yourself, if you've learned how to raise capital, if you've gone out and got a bunch of joint venture partners, um, all of these things that you're doing, you still need that to replace your income if you want to do this full time. So in order to do that, when our real estate investors, as they gain more experience over the years, they start to do more than one thing at the same time. Um, you know, you may be have a few holding properties that you've got in your portfolio that, you know, they're good properties, they're steady cash flow off of those, and you just hold on to those for years and years and years, but you might need an influx of cash. So you go, you flip a property. Um, some, some of our young people are doing house hacking, uh, where they buy a, a property that's suited up and down and they legalize the basement suite that boosts the value of that property. And then they move on to the next one. Um, some of them are doing Airbnb arbitrage where they go out and they secure leases on multiple uh, apartments or condos, and then they sublet them as Airbnb. So once you start doing many of these things at the same time, then you'll see the cash start to grow and grow and grow. And you need that cash flow coming in because that's your income. You need something to live on day to day. You always need something yeah. to live on day to day and cover your expenses. So the key, the key here is, is, and this is what we promised everyone on, on, on the call tonight. The key here is, is mo moving forward, taking action, uh, buying something that you, that you, that's going to cash flow. That is firstly key, but where people get to when they can quit their day job or work at a job that they really want to work at and not worry about money anymore is when they can buy properties and refinance them down the road and what you have to remember with real estate investing is when you refinance those funds it's tax-free money okay so when you refinance eighty thousand dollars eighty thousand dollars is going into your bank account and you're not paying any tax on it so that's how our investors over the years and this is how tim and i got to so many properties we had a number of properties that we bought that were just rental properties this magic thing happens in real estate where it goes up. It happened this year. I think every property that we bought for our clients went up over $100,000. So this magic thing happens. Um, someone like Julian, who we were talking about in Silver Springs, he could now refinance that money and then either use that to pay himself if he really wants to, uh, use it for a vacation, use it. We've seen Tim, we've seen people put pools in their houses. We've seen them buy Mastercraft uh, wakeboarding boats. We've seen nice cars. Um, you can use it for whatever. But what we like to say is use some of it to buy more real estate. So then in a few more years, you've got more options to pull money uh, out of. So you don't have to work your day job and worry about earning an income. So that's where the real, um, Tim, that's where the real funds come from for people to, to, if they really want to quit their day job and become real estate investors. And as Tim said, you need two, at least two strategies on the go because you're always going to be using that cash. 
So you need to find ways of either doing a flip on the side or doing an Airbnb sublet or doing a rent to own, either or can generate cash. So you do have income coming in each month. Yeah, and, and what we want to stress is if you do love what you're doing, don't quit. You know, build up your real estate business so that, you know, the, the income in your real estate business is down here and then it starts to build and build and build. Once it gets to where it can replace your income, if you don't want to quit your day job, then don't quit your day job. But you'll have that peace of mind that if you, you can quit whenever you want. And that's what we would suggest people do is bring that real estate investment income up, up, up until it's on par with what you're earning right now in your day job. And then you have that freedom, that the flexibility to quit, to work or to you know, work less, whatever it is, but you'll know that your real estate investing, your real estate investments are making you enough money that you can just walk away from your job you know, whenever you can. And when we say don't quit a job that you love, most of the people that we know they're working in a job where they want to be there. You know, there's enough flexibility in the workforce right now that you can move to a job where you like it. If you don't really like your job, that'll probably give you more incentive to go out and do better on your real estate investing. And then by all means, quit your job once the real estate investing income goes up and equals what you're making right now. Yeah, and we've had, Tim, over the years, people quit their day jobs to do what we're doing, become realtors and, and ask us to join our team. And if we have an investor that wants to do that, we're never, ever going to say no, because we know that they're 100% passionate about investing in real estate. Um, yeah, that's spot on, Tim. Uh, it's really don't quit your day job, but do a job that you want to do and let real estate support you. I know we're going to get into the books that Tim and I wrote just quickly here. Um, but one of them, I know when I moved to Canada, I was earning $10 an hour and at, at Bonterra and I loved uh, being a chef there because um, they made everything from scratch. And I didn't even care that I was earning $10 an hour back then because I had all of the real estate behind me and I could access that equity and, and, and people that I was working with, chefing with, or people that was like, what's Azad doing? They didn't really understand that that I knew real estate was going to get me there. Yeah, and and another thing we got to stress is it's never you're never going to be an overnight success in real estate investing. It takes time. What the the overused phrase is it's not um, timing the market, but time in the market. And we can tell you that from experience. Every real estate investor we know has taken you know a long some longer than others, but it's taken a long time to get where they are that they can be comfortable enough to know that their real estate investing could be enough to sustain their lifestyle. And, you know, we need to stress that to new people, especially, I know all, you know, the people that are on the call that we've known for years and years and years, they understand that it's not going to be two properties and then you can go and retire. It takes time. And as long as you realize that and you can set your goals and, you know, devise your plan so that you can get to an eventual replacement of your income right now, then, you know, it makes the journey a lot easier. You're not under the stress to replace that income in five years. And maybe it doesn't happen. Maybe a shock to the market happens like uh, COVID or maybe, you know, now the looks like the world's going to go into another recession. Maybe that happens and that puts a dent in your timeline. As long as you know that there's going to be market shocks and it's going to take a little time, then, you know, you'll understand that you're going to get there regardless. All you need is that drive. Yeah, that's perfect, Tim. Like action, uh, the drive, and understanding that there's going to be waves and you have to ride those waves. It's, it's as simple as that. But if the property is cash flowing, and that's all we're buying for our clients, if the property is cash flowing, um, it, it, you just let the market do its thing. And then that magic thing will happen where it goes up and you've got that equity to use to move forward. Yeah. So if anybody has any questions, please put them in the chat there. We'll be uh, happy to get to, we'll answer every single one that comes along. But that's our, that concludes our seminar, how to replace your day job and become a millionaire investor. Um, just understand it takes time. So one thing we want you to do if you're just starting out, if you want to, you know, want to get into real estate investing is download our free ebook, One Million Reasons to Buy Real Estate. Um, you can download it from our website. It's always on our email uh, signatures. 
it's a really, really great starting point because it tells you why we get into real estate and it tells you about the three rates of return. You know, the mortgage pay down, the equity growth and the cash flow. And it's really something that, you know, if you bring it out five years from now, you'll find something new in it because it gives you a lot of good reasons to invest in real estate. Yeah, it gives you the fundamentals. So it's, a, it's an easy read. Uh, when we wrote our next book that you'll see, Fearless Real Estate, we realized that we wanted to keep it separate. We wanted people to understand what real estate can do for people. Um, and it goes through the core fundamentals that you should understand, like property cycles, uh, appreciation, mortgage pay down, cash flow, uh, and if investing is for you more importantly. Uh, this next book, Fearless Real Estate, uh, what we love about it, you can see all those little pictures of people on there. Uh, what we love about it, it's about our clients. Uh, it, it goes through their success stories. It goes through what they've done. It talks about every strategy there is. As you can see, Tim and I are straight up on these strategies. Uh, we will teach you the good and bad. And when we say that, what to look out for um, and how much time some of these strategies take, what it actually takes to get it done. Uh, and some of these other courses, it gets us frustrated because they sell it like it's so easy. Um, some of these things can come easy. It does come easier once you pull one deal together, and then you could leverage from that to get more deals done. Um, but it is a very, very good read. We know I talk about Rich Dad, Poor Dad all of the time. It did change uh, our lives back in the early 2000s there, Tim. Um, and, and the funny thing about Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it's, it's very motivating, which is great, but it really gave you no insight of what, what to go and do. Uh, what this book here, Fearless Real Estate, we named it Fearless Real Estate because we want to make you fearless uh, and, and understand what it takes and that you could do it as well. Um, it, it's not rocket science, um, but it does take patience. It does take understanding uh, the real estate game. Um, and it does take getting over your fears. And this book can definitely get you there. Uh, the next thing is, someone was asking in the chat, is there a mentorship program? Yes, uh, our mentorship program isn't for everybody. We have to stress that. And do you have to do it? No, you don't have to do it. We, we don't even care if you do it. Uh, but it is changing so many lives right now. It will cost you a thousand bucks. It is designed to get you a million dollars worth of equity. We work out a plan uh, to get you there what properties it's going to take, and then we're there every step of the way. It can be used anywhere in the world. We've got people all over the world using it. Um, it's a great program. It comes with 100 hours of content. You can learn it on the go, on your own, uh, wherever you are. Um, and it really, really can save you a lot of money. It could help you make money straight off the bat uh, from real estate, even if you don't have any money in the bank account. So... Uh, anything else to add there, Tim? Yeah, and, and one thing that uh, we have to stress is that when you do purchase this program, you do get access to you know a lot of the, the things before the general public does from us. Like if we have off-market properties, if we have come in across some foreclosure properties that haven't hit the market yet, um, our members always get access to that first. And they get access to our, um, our expertise and our time. And, you know, we... We want all of our investors to be successful. So we kind of give you that little push to get out there and start your investing career and start making money in real estate investing. If you've taken other courses, you know, for $20,000, what we want to do is we want to make you that $20,000 back as quickly as you can. So, you know, we want you to get into the game and start making money. Yeah, and I know I could see some people had bought the book last week. The whole bunch of books got shipped out last week, I saw. So they should be on their way um i know i got an email from someone there i'll double check to see that one went out um but yeah tim was just showcasing our crew tv this is for free uh you can basically see what our clients are doing there's case studies there's also um uh real life examples of what people are doing on our crew tv and it's a great way we release a video every week um it's a great way for you to see how our clients are getting ahead with real estate investing and it's free. I would join if I was you guys. The link is at the top of the comments. Um, I put it there before uh, the subscription link. Once you subscribe to that and hit the bell, you'll get notified when new videos come on. Uh, and we do post uh, a handful of seminars throughout the year. So you out there can learn, keep learning as well.
Yeah, and, and it, most of it is showcasing what our clients have done and the success that they've had. So, it, you know, it's not just me and Azad blowing smoke, you know, just saying this is what it is. No, we're actually interviewing the clients and they're telling us, you know, what success they've had and what strategies they're doing and what they want to do. So, you know, it's, it's, it's opinions and stories from real life people out there. And that's what we like the best about it. So, yeah, that's. Yeah. Complete. So if, if, if you're thinking first things for you guys, you simply, all you do, our email addresses are going to come up. Um, you send us an email and then we work out how to meet with you guys. I know I'm flying back into the country early next week. Um, and we will be hosting another seminar in two weeks time. We'll post that in the next couple of days. And if you like what you've seen and you think you have some joint venture partners or people out there interested in investing in real estate, please tell them about this free uh, meetup group. There's over 5,200 people. Something's working. Um, and, and we hope to see you in a couple of weeks time. Yeah, thanks everybody. Thanks for joining in.